about how to revise languages, specifically Spanish, because I study AQA Spanish at A-level. But I would say these tips probably do work for most language A-levels. I can't be sure about different specifications, but I think these tips should be helpful if you study any A-level language. So to start off, obviously a really important part of learning a language is vocab, and this is kind of un an unavoidable part of learning a language. I think the easiest way to do this is through the app Quizlet um, and if you do study AQA Spanish specifically either this textbook or one of these textbooks I have all of the vocab from all of those textbooks on my Quizlet which I just have like down here the whole time um, and so then you don't have to write them all out yourself because generally it takes so long that once they're there like please just use mine if you're looking for using that vocab. And I have also collected extra vocab throughout the year that I've been, like the years that I've been studying the course, just that's come up as we've been going along. And I have that as a section on my like Quizlet page as well. It's quite, because it's not great in terms of like letting you put stuff in folders and organize it that well. So it might be a bit difficult to find, but I'll try and link everything down below. Um, so in case you're looking for extra vocab, I've got a pretty good bank of extra vocab. And as I spoke about in a previous video, retrospective revision time tables are really useful and one of the main ways that I use them actually is for vocab. It means I have all of the textbook vocab and any other like tiny like folders that I've made like extra vocab, vocab specifically for essays or anything like that. I have that on Notion with the kind of, it's like a little selection thing of how well I know it, like very good, good, not very well, if I haven't learned it at all and I select that one on each time. And then I also have the date when I last did it. So then when I just want to go and do some vocab, I can just look and see, oh, that one's like red, basically. I haven't done them in ages as well. I have to do that. And then if they're all getting to a good level, then you can just start doing the one that you did the longest to go first. And I think for vocab, because it's so much about repetition and like a bit little and often, it's really helpful to have a retrospective revision timetable for that. Secondly, I just wanted to touch on grammar. Now, I haven't actually done that much. I did quite a bit before my mock exams last summer, but I haven't done that much this year. Grammar definitely is important, especially for, well, for everything really, but it can be really helpful for a couple of the exercises in the first paper, which are like listening, reading and writing, just because in ours, there's exercises where if you know grammar well, like you'll literally be able to get the answer right because you know the grammar. It's like the gap can fill kind of ones. And obviously any translations or writing you're doing, if you know the grammar well, it's so much easier and you're not gonna miss out on marks. Last summer when I was revising grammar, I predominantly used this book. It has just like sections on like different types of grammar, just like subjunctive, pronouns, all of that. And so you can go if you're like unsure on a certain bit that's coming up and you're making mistakes on, you can go straight to that section and practice it. The only bad thing I think about is of doing it like that is that oftentimes you can actually do the grammar when you know that you're doing that. Like I can do subjunctive when I know that it's subjunctive, but the difficult bit is trying to remember whether you need the subjunctive or not. And those books don't really help with that just because it literally says at the top of the page what you're practicing. So you kind of already have it in your head and you already know what you should be putting. You're just trying to work out which version of it you should be putting. So. It's good and bad. <laughs> and I thought I'd just add in, we also have these books. These are all stuff that my school's given me, so I don't know how easy it is to find online. Um, they're just workbooks for, like, I think that one's AS stuff, and that one's A2 stuff. And they just have practice, like, listening, reading exercises, just as a, like, top up for all the past papers, because for Spanish, there definitely isn't that much past papers of the spec we're doing at the moment. So any extra practice you can get is obviously great. Now I'm going to move on to talking about the writing paper, which for me is a play and a film. I'm studying El Labyrinto del Fauno and La Casa de Bernada Alba. I'd say one of the most useful things is getting a study guide for these because it just gives you the like main themes, like any analysis stuff, like character, like things, quotes it has in there. Like I feel like depending on how well you studied it in class, it can be a really great like top up of actually helping you to understand it well and being able to 
write questions about it. For me, I made notes on the study guides just so I could have them slightly more summarised to learn from, but I don't know whether that was actually used or I was wasting my time, and I think that's a personal preference. And to learn all the stuff about all the themes, characters, etc, I think the most useful method is like putting like themes in the middle and maybe then even if you can't remember themes branch out from the book of like what themes there are obviously it's good if you can remember them but it's a good start when you're just completely blank of mind and then like mind map and go off all the things you can think of that represent like disobedience or I don't know like entrapment or something and as much as you can and then go look through your notes and fill in all the gaps with like a different colour pen I just think a different colour pen really helps to like stick in your head that it's stuff you didn't know and also then when you like just glance at the page you can know how well you knew the topic and then if you just repeat that a couple or two more times you should see like the coloured pen decrease which is quite nice to just see that actually yeah, you are learning and you could also see the areas which like maybe aren't sticking so well and that you need to fully like go back maybe find some videos read what like watch that bit of the film re read that bit of the script for me just so you can kind of re go through that information and like try your best to get it into your head in terms of quotes i really struggled to try and find a way to learn them because obviously my year didn't do gcse's properly so i never really learned quotes for english and i just couldn't really find anything online that was that helpful in terms of learning them so if you are struggling then hopefully this helps what i have is a list of quotes now i don't think you need loads and loads for spanish and like languages in general but obviously i haven't done the exam so anything i'm saying is like before i've actually got the grades a method that has really worked for me is having your list of all your quotes and i would try and do it either have them grouped by character or by theme try not to do it by like act or something or just a whole bunch in general just because this makes it so much easier when you're doing the exam i think because then rather than you just have a load of quotes in your head that you kind of don't have links to anything and then when you see the exam question you kind of almost have to process through all those quotes in your head if you have already made that link between a theme and the quote then in the exam i feel like the quote will come so much more easily to you um hopefully and method i'm using to actually learn the quotes is so once you have this list either on like an electronic device or you can do this on paper i think but i haven't tried it but what i do is just get like a white pen or a black pen i guess would be easier if you're doing it on paper and just blank out like parts of the quotes obviously if you're doing your paper you have to then reprint and reprint and reprint which isn't great but it depends on what you have access to and it definitely would still be possible to do that way but what i do is kind of blank over some of the words starting off with literally like a handful of like blanks per list of quotes and you just like go through them and fill them in. I would say write them in rather than just say them in your head just because I think writing them just helps it get in there a bit more because it takes longer to write it and then you almost go over the quote a few more times in your head. And then just keep doing this process, like getting through the quotes and blank out more and more each time. So kind of like, then like leave a bit more less, a bit less. And then I'd say once you get to a point where you've almost got the majority of it blanked off, maybe just not the first word, I would blank out the whole quote or I guess you could then do flashcards in this way um, and just write a prompt instead so and a prompt in English rather than in the language because I think sometimes it's easier to remember the quote when you see the like Spanish word of like that's in the quote somewhere and then go back through them again and see if you can get the whole quote just from the prompt and then hopefully if you are then having them all like linked to that theme and then maybe at some point see if you can just put the theme there and branch out and see how many quotes you can remember like you are kind of then you're getting them to your head to a good extent and i found that that's been working relatively well for me now moving on to oral cards um and the speaking exam now if you are earlier on in the year and not about to say your a levels i would say my like biggest tip would be as you're going through your textbook and doing all the exercises that you're doing in class like for example all of these ones like they're just pages of exercises but because at GCSE all of the exercises in the textbooks are almost just like made up stuff like it's like oh someone has a dog and like all of that like they're not true stories whereas most of the stuff in these textbooks 
is actually facts and like it's on actual stuff about Spain which didn't really click for me for ages and so I never really wrote notes from the textbook as we were going along and a lot of the exercises have great stuff in that you could want to speak about in an oral I never like picked up that information as I was going along which meant that now a couple of weeks ago I realised that I then had to make notes on all these things and kind of re-go through the textbook and almost redo the exercises to get that information out of them so I would recommend if you are earlier on in the year to do that and if not then try and do some notes on it to the best of your ability because you need to have a bank of statistics and like general knowledge like it doesn't all need to be statistics i don't think i say once you have these notes with the same strategy i spoke about before kind of then put that like topic in the middle of my map and try and like blur all the information you can remember and then use your notes and fill in the gaps i would say make sure you are doing this from memory first before you go and fill in the gaps not just copying straight out from your notes because obviously that like recalling of the information and trying to recall it helps to start learning it and i'd say if you really can't think of anything maybe do just read through your notes first so that then you'll have a starting point to remember because obviously if you're just staring at a blank page and then right just writing it all out that's probably not going to be best and the final thing would be get access to as many like old like oral cards as you can and go through them or if you haven't got that then see if there's any oral questions in the textbook or any that you can always make up for yourself from the notes you have and then just sit there and basically speak to yourself and um, through all of the cards because obviously that skill of speaking and filling in all the gaps and like with your own words like connected words and stuff is you're gonna need that in the exam <laughs> And finally, I just want to touch on the IRP. Now, there's very little information on this online, I feel like. So I don't even know if I'm doing this right. And I probably will do a whole video on this once I have actually done the exam and got a grade because I don't want to give like false advice. But I would say, even at this point, make sure that all your research is specific to like Spain or a Spanish speaking country because that's very important in the IRP. And you can just kind of, depending on your topic, but I feel like you can sway it towards that by just getting like Spain specific facts, even if your topic's slightly more general. In the same way as all before, I mean, I don't know if this revision technique will work for you, but I've genuinely found it to be the best for even writing economics as well, is the mind map and then fill in the gaps, kind of blur into a mind map and then fill in the gaps. So I do that the same for my IRP. I guess you could do it vocally, rather than writing because the whole exam is a spoken exam. I think the only pro of writing it rather than speaking it, even though it's a speaking exam, is that you can then see the gaps and see what you remember and what you didn't. Whereas when you're speaking, unless I guess you could record yourself and listen to it back, you're gonna struggle to see, looking back, what you did remember and what you didn't because there might be some facts that like, yeah, you know them, or like you think you know them when you like read them. You're like, oh yeah, I remember that, I remember that but like you haven't actually got that memory enough that you'd actually be able to like speak it and say it in your exam, you just kind of know it exists. And then if you do do the like writing of the mind map and filling in the gaps, at some point you should then I think kind of identify main topics or main questions that you might get asked and then just basically ask yourself and speak and see how much you can say. And do remember that the speaking exams aren't that long so you won't be able to speak for like hours about your topic and yeah that is the end of the video um i hope something was of use for whatever language you're studying and obviously i just want to disclaim that i haven't yet done the exams i've been doing relatively well in any mock exams or end of year exams i've done but i can't guarantee that these methods will work for me or work for you but hopefully they just give you a something else to try that maybe you haven't tried before and it might work and good luck on your exams if you are taking them and please do comment below if you're studying a language and what language you're studying in because that'd be so cool to find out thank you for watching bye